You know there is an option that I can use to hide my Wi-Fi name. Hide my Wi-Fi name. That's something I can do. And in this video, we're going to see how I can do that. What happens when I do that? And why probably I don't want to do that. As you can see, I'm in the general wireless settings of my ASUS wireless router. As its name suggests, this is where I can change the general wireless settings of my router. For example, change the Wi-Fi name and password for each frequency band. Or maybe enable or disable the Smart Connect, which is an interesting feature that we covered in the previous video. There is also an option to hide the SSID for each frequency band. When we want to connect a wireless client, for example a laptop, to a wireless network, we need to know the SSID of the network, also known as Wi-Fi name, and the pre-shared key of the network, also known as Wi-Fi password. Well, the purpose of the Wi-Fi name is to create a unique identifier for the wireless network so the wireless clients, in this case the laptop, can easily find it and connect to it. Now, the laptop already knows the names of the Wi-Fi's that are nearby, including the one that it's going to connect to. But how does it exactly know it? It knows that because the wireless router is continuously advertising the Wi-Fi name in the form of beacon frames. So whatever wireless network that I can see here on this laptop right now are basically from the beacon frames that it was able to receive from different access points or wireless routers at this time. And that whole process is actually called passive scanning. But there is also active scanning and that's when the laptop would actively look for a specific wireless network. And I just realized in one of my uh, first uh, videos ever on this channel, I actually had tried to explain active scanning uh, with that kind of graphics. Uh, and I even used the bird uh, to explain this. Um, so in case you're wondering what active scanning is, uh, feel free to never watch that video and maybe just Google it. I'm sure there are very good articles out there. Now, when we hide the SSID, then the SSID field in the beacon frame will be set to null. Don't get me wrong though, we are not deleting the SSID. It is still configured on the wireless router. It's just not being publicly advertised. So this way the laptop can no longer automatically learn the SSID name from the beacon frames. As you can see, we cannot see the network name on this list anymore. And as a result, it cannot connect to it. Unless of course we manually enter the SSID information in the laptop and any other wireless clients that need to be connected. For example, in the episode number 12 of my KB series, I've showed how we can connect a Windows computer to a hidden wireless network. So check it out if you're interested. Okay, so far I know that if I hide my SSID, my Wi-Fi name, then the wireless router will no longer publicly advertise its name. So when I search for the wireless networks on my laptop, smartphone, or any other wireless client device, I should not be able to see my hidden Wi-Fi, even though it is actually there. That's a cool feature because if I hide my SSID, hide my network name, then people outside my house, for example my neighbors, they cannot see my Wi-Fi and they're not supposed to see it in the first place. And I can configure my own devices to make sure they're connected. So what's not to like? A couple of things actually. For starters, it's not like no one can ever see my SSID anymore because anyone with a layer 2 wireless protocol analyzer can capture the frames that are being sent by any of the devices that are connected to this hidden SSID. And find the name which by the way is being transmitted in clear text. So long story short, anyone with the right tools can find a hidden SSID in a matter of seconds. Also this hidden SSID is not an industry standard, meaning that each manufacturer, each vendor might implement it a little bit different. As a result, there might be some compatibility and connection issues. For example, even if I configure it correctly on my client machine, it might still not be able to connect. 
Besides, if there are too many devices that need to be connected to a hidden SSID, every single one of them has to be configured manually and individually. Just imagine in an office environment, maybe in a company, if the employees are not familiar with how they should connect to a hidden wireless network, what a headache this would be for their IT team. So the bottom line is hiding the Wi-Fi name is possible and most of the wireless routers or access points have this option. Now if my intention of using it is to make my wireless network more secure, then I'll probably want to think again and instead make sure I'm using strong authentication, encryption and password for my Wi-Fi. Because if somebody's intention is to hack my Wi-Fi, then finding a hidden SSID would be nothing but a joke for them. Now, sometimes I've seen some people who have mistaken hiding the SSID for disabling the frequency band. For example, let's say they have a dual band wireless router and for whatever reason they only want to use one of the bands. They can keep on using the router like this and maybe only connect to their desired band. However, a better and more responsible way would be to turn off the other band completely. And that's when some people might try to hide the SSID to do that. But now we know this is not the right solution because this way the Wi-Fi is still gonna be there. And the right way to do that is by disabling that frequency band. For example, this is how I can do that in my ASUS wireless router. That being said, hiding the Wi-Fi name might still have some use cases. For example, if I live in a densely populated area, then some people might by mistake just keep trying to connect to my Wi-Fi. Maybe the name is somewhat similar to their Wi-Fi or something like that. And if it happens a lot, it can make my wireless router unnecessarily busy just rejecting all those connection requests. Which in that case, hiding the Wi-Fi name might be helpful. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you think others might like it too. And subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you again and I will see you soon.